Don't immerse it into water, it will get spoiled. I have to write an instruction manual. Similarly, God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not have to take the form of a human being. He chooses a man amongst men to deliver His message, which we Muslims call as messengers, as Rasul, a Nabi, prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He chooses a man out of men to do the job. And if you allow me to call the human being the machine, I would say it is the most complicated machine present on the face of the earth. The more complicated the machine, the more requirement of an instruction manual. Which is the instruction manual for the human beings? The instruction manual is the Holy Quran. The do's and don'ts for the human beings is mentioned in the Holy Quran. This is the instruction manuals for the human beings. We Muslims believe that there were several revelations which were revealed. But the last and final revelation is the Holy Quran. There were several messengers that came before. But the last and final messenger is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to believe in the last and final prophet and the last and final revelation that is the Holy Quran. This is the instruction manual for the human beings, the do's and don'ts. There are some people who argue that why can't God take human form? See, God can do everything. So why can't he take human forms? I tell these people, I agree that God can take human form. But the moment he takes the human form, he ceases to be God Almighty. The moment he takes the human form, he no longer remains God Almighty. You know why? Because the definition of God Almighty and human beings are opposite. The qualities of Almighty God and human being is different. Almighty God is immortal. Human beings are mortal. You can't have an immortal, mortal person. It's not possible. God Almighty has got no beginning, no end. Human beings have a beginning and an end. You can't have a person who has no beginning and has a beginning. It's not possible. You can't have a person who has an end and has no end. It's opposite. Therefore, if God Almighty takes the form of human being, he can take, but he will not take. Because the moment he takes the form of a human being, he ceases to be Almighty God. He no longer remains Almighty God. And if you analyze, there are certain qualities of human beings and qualities of Almighty God. For example, human beings, they require to eat. God Almighty does not require to eat. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse number 14, Shall I take for anyone a protector besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, who feeds everyone but does not require to be fed? The human beings, they require sleep. They require rest. God Almighty does not require rest. Quran says in Ayat al-Qursi, Surah al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 255, Allah la ilaha al wala naum, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no slumber can seize him, nor does he require rest. Therefore, you cannot have a God-man. You can either have God, or you can have a man. You can't have God-man because it is exactly opposite. And the moment God Almighty takes the form of a human being, he will not take. But if he takes, he no longer remains God Almighty. He cannot later on again become God Almighty. If he can become, then even you and I can become. No human being can become God Almighty. If you say, God Almighty took the form of human being, I can agree with you, he can become a human being. But later on you say he again became God Almighty, that's not logical. Because if a human being can become God Almighty, then I mean you and I can become God Almighty. And suppose I believe and worship Almighty God, who has all these, all these qualities, who is the creator of everything, is omniscient, omnipotent, all-powerful, etc. But the moment he loses his quality and becomes a human being, I no longer require to worship him. Similarly, for example, if I respect a teacher who is very knowledgeable and I am the student of the teacher who is expert in teaching, maybe a particular subject, say for example science, expert. 
Later on, he has an accident and he has amnesia. He loses his memory. Can I again be the student of the same teacher? No, because he has lost his qualities. The moment he loses the qualities which he has, the knowledge of science, no longer can I be a student. I can say that he was a pious person, I can say he's a respectable person, but no longer can I be his student. Why? Because now he has lost his knowledge. The quality for which I was his student, he no longer has those qualities. Therefore, in Islam, God Almighty will not take human form. The moment he takes human form, he ceases to be Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are some people who say that, see, God Almighty can be called by various names. I do agree with them. The Quran says the same. Quran says in Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse number 110, it says, Qulidullah Abidur Rahman, Ayyakma Tad'u, Falaul Asma al Hasna. Say, call upon him by Allah, or call upon him by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belongs the most beautiful names. So the Holy Quran says, you can call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by any name, but it should be a beautiful name. It should not conjure up a mental picture. And the Holy Quran gives no less than 99 different attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 99 different attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rahman, Rahim, Jabbar, al Karim, al Quddus, Khalik, several. Merciful, most gracious, the creator no less than 99 different attributes. You can call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by any name. Allah is Rahman. Allah is Rahim. Allah is Khalik. These are the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you single out attribute and you say that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have got no objection. But if you single out an attribute and give each attribute a different definition, give each attribute a different form, then we take strong exception to that. Let me give you an example. Suppose someone describes me, that Dr. Zakir Naik, he is the president of the Islamic Research Foundation. He is the chairman of the IRF Educational Trust. He is the president of the Islamic Dimensions. He is the husband of Mrs. Farad Zakir Naik. He is the father of Farik Zakir Naik. All these are different attributes or different types of definition of Dr. Zakir Naik. So if you say he is the president of Islamic Research Foundation, it's a correct definition. Dr. Zakir Naik is the chairman of IRF Educational Trust, it's a correct definition. But if you pick up each definition, each attribute, and give it a different form. For example, Dr. Zakir Naik, his height is about 5 feet 11 inches. My height is 5 feet 11 inches. I am Vitish in complexion. I wear spectacles. I am thin. But now you tell me that the president of Islamic Research Foundation is Zakir Naik, who is 4 and a half feet. The attribute is correct. Dr. Zakir Naik is the president of Islamic Research Foundation. But the moment you give it a different form, instead of 5 feet 11 inches, you say that he's 4 and a half feet, then Dr. Zakir Naik is the president of Islamic Research Foundation, but he is not 4 and a half feet. If you say Dr. Zakir Naik is the husband of Mrs. Farah Zakir Naik, and he's a fat person, he does not wear specs. Dr. Zakir Naik is the husband of Mrs. Farat Naik, but he is not fat. So you can give attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Almighty God, but don't give it different forms. If you say that Dr. Zakir Naik is only the president of Islamic Research Foundation and nothing else, then the definition is wrong. Because while I am the president of Islamic Research Foundation, I am also the husband of my wife, Mrs. Farah Zakir Naik. I'm also the father of my son, Farik Zakir Naik. So you can't single out one attribute and say, this attribute alone is God Almighty. 
all put together is Dr. Zakir Naik. Similarly,